Why is it important to share your personal stories of activism? I'm here with Bex Caputo. Hopefully I said that right with Bex uh, from BexTalkSex.com. And I'm Kathy Bartoli from TheIntimacyDoja.com. Thank you so much for being here, Bex. I, you're speaking at Woodhill Sexual Freedom Summit in a couple of months, and um, you're going to be talking about your stories of act, uh, personal stories of activism. I think that's amazing and inspiring, and I want to hear more. Yeah, so what I'm talking about is how when you share your stories, that in and of itself is a form of activism. Mm. Um, and that by sharing our stories, we create empathy, and that can be a driving force for change. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'm particularly, like, all these interviews have been really fun, but I use story for, I talk, teach copywriting and marketing, and how mm -hmm. we can tell our story and be really authentic as marketers and really unique. And I, I'm like, I can't wait to hear, like, how do you weave that in? Like, what, do you, what are some tips you're going to share in your talk? We're gonna talk a lot about what it's like to be a person uh, who shares stories and the things we've learned as because everyone on the panel is very open. Um, yeah. We have Kate Sloan and Dirty Lola and then uh, Kevin Patterson from Poly Role Models. Oh, good people, really good people. Yeah, yeah, so Kevin talks a lot about what it's like to hold space for other people's stories mm -hmm. and the rest of us talk a lot about what it's like to be very open about our own stories. Lola is and... very vocal about things that matter to, to her. I love that. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, how did you get here? Like, what brought you to the place where you're talking about activism, not only just talking about activism, but using stories to inspire other people? I think for a very long time, I looked at what I did and the way I share my stories and other people's stories as like frivolous. I didn't even really call it storytelling. It, it wasn't was like just, you weren't marching and making. Right. I was just talking about stuff mm -hmm. and like I didn't know how that was valuable until I started getting the feedback from people and saying that they felt seen or that they thought they were alone and these sort of, you know, the messages a lot of sex educators get, but it kind of emphasized to me the importance of what I was doing yeah. and the way that like that it is a form of activism and it is this like powerful form of vulnerability mm -hmm. and it's valuable in a way that it doesn't always seem right at the surface. Yeah, it's incredibly valuable. I share a lot of times I I'm very shy and I'll share pe to people I didn't date for 14 years because I didn't think anyone would want a bigger person. And I all the time I have people coming up to me that Maybe they're 10 pounds overweight and they're like, oh, I, I hear you. Like, I, I thought I was the only one that felt that way. And if you can do it, I can do it. And I think that's, we need that role modeling. We need that inspiration because it's really tough out there sometimes. Yeah, one of the things I really love uh, is this idea Kate Canfield introduced me to, which is the idea of being a beacon of permission. Oh, I love that. Yeah, just openly and authentically living and that creates space for other people to do the same. And maybe they're not out on the street corner talking about their kinks or whatever the way I do sometimes. Um, but they As have... you demonstrate with the toys hanging behind yeah, you, I exactly. love that. <laughs> like, hello, welcome to my room. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like maybe it doesn't look the way it does for me, but seeing other people doing it gives people a moment to be like, oh, that thing that I thought was weird or scary or shameful is okay. Because if this person can talk about doing it, then maybe I can at least do it. Yeah. Well, I yeah. remember, I mean, it's levels. I know that when I first, I kissed a girl and I liked it, so I thought I was a lesbian. <laughs> and it was this, it was so hard to tell even one person. And then I realized mm -hmm. I was more pansexual and poly and like, and there's levels. And now, I'm, you know, out talking about sizes and other things. It's like, I feel like there's always a next level of vulnerability that we can go to. And even someone speaking about the fact that they enjoy sex is it's yeah. activism that's it's a way of yeah. saying no we get to enjoy this me too yeah absolutely uh and i find on the other end as the person sharing the story like you talked about sometimes it's terrifying to tell one person but then you tell two people and three people and now it's... you're just talking about it because like the world didn't implode the first time yeah. <laughs> so i guess i can just keep doing it yeah. uh, and that's really powerful for me um, a lot of times I'll tell stories through humor because it's the easiest way for me to be vulnerable, but yeah. also uh, I feel like it's engaging and people will listen if they think they're going to laugh, right? Yeah. Um, but there have been times where I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't talk about that. I can't tell anyone that. 
And then I think of a joke about it, and I'm like, how, but I'm hilarious. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to share it with some people. (laughs) Yeah, humor, because a lot of the stuff is really heavy, or we've been taught to be scared of it. Um, I use the analogy with my clients all the time. It's like going to the gym. You're not going to go to the first time in the gym. You're not going to go find the 100-pound weight. You're going to go to the two-pound weights and just practice a little bit, being open a little bit, and then it gets easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, And finding that foot in the door in whatever way makes it easier for you to tell your stories. Like, through me, for me, it's through jokes and, like, playing it up. And I love, like, sit-down storytelling where I'm going to, you know, tell you the epic saga of, like, I'm I'm very Italian, so the uh-huh. conversations we used to have around the dinner table, right, <laughs> where you all crowd and one person's got this whole story about what happened, and I love that, but I also love just casually mentioning things. Mm-hmm. Like, at, at my day job, I'm uh, one of the only trans people. We actually recently hired another one. Um, Congratulations. And, <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. Um and like I'm poly and I'm kinky and I'm open about all those things. And the number of times my coworkers come to me and they're like, so uh, about that thing. Yeah. Like, you know, pulling me into the corner or whatever. And it's just like, it's amazing how many people are thinking about it, but they don't think they can talk about it. There's, if you're the one, like I, people come to me for sex advice at work all the time. And I'm like, I mean, I do teach this, but there's a lot of really good people out there. And they're like, yeah. but you're here and you've heard, you know, we know you. So it feels safe, I think safer yeah. so I, I love that you're weaving that in and I can I know when someone comes to me and just gives me statistics or something like this is a problem we need to change it I can get that it's important but if they tell me the story of one person's experience and how they struggled I'm just like heart I'm like what can I do I want to do it now versus like oh there's a lot of people out there suffering you know you know 27 percent of the population is blah 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 and you're like oh that's too bad that's we should do something yeah. someday versus here's this one person struggling this is what they felt it can be like let's do some let's let's make a difference yeah and it puts a face to mm-hmm. that person's experience yeah. right um like i again in, in my day job the little ways that because i wasn't trans when i or i didn't come out as trans when i started working there yeah. Um, so watching the way their language has changed just through knowing me yeah. is like, because I'm putting a face to it. Like they never, it's not like they actively disliked trans people. They just didn't know. And they learned so much and they care so much more yeah. just by knowing well, There's so much who fear around that. If, if you don't know anyone, we, our brain makes stories up that they might be scary or different. And then you meet some people and you're like, oh, they're human just like they have the same kind of yeah. thing and it it's personalized it so beautifully yeah yeah so, absolutely oh uh, your, your panel sounds amazing um, i'm really excited <laughs> um can you tell me why are you excited to share this at, at woodhall i love this space so i just i'm curious why i i love woodhall so woodhall was one of the first conferences i went to uh-huh. uh this will be my fourth or fifth year there i think Um, And it's just a really, really great event for me. It's the one time a year I get to see so many of these people because, like, so many people that matter to me all kind of congregate for this one event. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's really powerful, and it creates this little space that doesn't exist anywhere else. Right. Um, And everyone is really motivated and really passionate about what they're working towards, and I get to meet and spend time with all of these people. And it's just, I love it so much. And I'm really honored to, like, be presenting there for the first time in all the years I've gone. Oh, congratulations. Um, it's, yeah, it's really, really exciting. Um, and I was really glad that they accepted my panel and yeah. it's gonna be great. I, I know the competition, there was a lot of competition this year. So Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the warmth there. I've been to, I go to a bunch of different conferences. It just feels very warm and people really wanna help each other. And yeah. so the networking, I'm very shy. So I'm like, am I gonna fit in? And I loved how people were like, no, come sit with me. Or like, what are you doing? It was just really fun for me. Yeah, it doesn't feel like like capital N networking, right? It feels like socializing yeah. and um, spending time with all these people. And you're making all of these really valuable connections when you do that. But it doesn't have like the pressure that like networking events sometimes have. Yeah, no, that's great. I can't wait to see you there. Um, before we send people off to go register for Woodhull if they haven't already, um, What's a tip if someone wants to get better at being an activist or sharing their story or like what 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 would you tell them? How would they start? 
take baby steps like you were talking about earlier, right? Share one thing with one person that you think is interesting or helpful or part of your experience. Um, also like reflect on your own experience because it's easy to forget all of the ways that we are different and all the things we stand for and reflect a little bit and see what stories you have to tell and which ways you can kind of share that with even just one person. No, but I, getting a glimpse into someone else's life is super powerful. It really is. And I love that. I think sometimes we forget because we grow, we grow. And then it's like, oh, yeah. no, I was always this confident. And you look back and you're like, no, I wasn't. Three <laughs> years ago, this was terrifying. And like going back and link, linking to the, the journey can make the story very engaging for people. Yeah. Because we all struggled. So. Thank you yeah. so much for, for sharing this and for putting this together. I think this is going to be so powerful. I'm really, really excited to bring it to Woodhull, and thank you for having me here to talk about it. That's my pleasure. If you're listening to this and you have questions or comments, please leave them below. We'll try to get back to you. Thanks, Bex. Bye.